you're on your phone. LA take on the Cal Poly Mustangs. How's my audio going? Is my audio? Okay, cool. Anytime. We're having Chris, or are we having Chris on? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, no, we could ask him whatever. I don't even need to prepare for no, that. No, we're not having Chris on here. Oh, what were you asking him for? For a, live, a live shot. Oh, for a live shot. Quick audible, real quick. Yeah, uh, I heard you over there. Uh, okay. Nonetheless, the show must go on. 
And we're your anchors. I'm Megan Healy. I'm Brian Trong. Welcome to Mustang Game Day here as Cal Poly coming back from a 9-5 to five loss last night to UCLA. They're going to look to take the win here. They are. They actually had the lead last night winning, not winning, almost winning. Oh, we we hoped that they, they were going to win. They took the lead, though. They took the lead 5-4 to four by the bottom of the seventh, but right as they yanked that starting pitcher, Trenton Shelton, it kind of all collapsed there. So we're actually going to, before we look at the highlights from that game, we're going to toss it out to our field reporter, Connor McCarthy. He's a little bit farther, closer to the field in Baggett Stadium. Connor, what's up with you? Megan and Brian, I'm out here inside the stadium, right behind home plate as UCLA just finished up practicing with their warm-ups. Cal Poly's taking the field right now. I'll be back later in uh, the show to bring more information from uh, the Krukos Clubhouse. Back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Connor. We'll be checking with him throughout the day as well. So the game coming up today, we're going to be looking at a few of the key players here for the Mustangs. Cam Schneider is going to be coming in here. But before we talk about the key <laughs> players, let's look at the highlights. Yeah, and hopefully well. they can learn from their mistakes last night. So last night, Cal Poly lost 9-5 to five against nationally ranked number 9, UCLA. They had a little bit of a rough start there. Trenton Shelton, though, pitched into the seventh inning. Great start for him. But And, and before they yanked him, yeah. Cal Poly was with the lead, 5-4, to four, yeah. but unfortunately the bullpen kind of collapsed, and yeah. we've seen that often. Yeah, and as you're saying, you know, Trent Shelton, he was doing great. He had six strikeouts to those seven innings uh, that he was pitching there, and the UCLA, though, they did get a hot start there, two runs to start out the game in the top of the first, and Cal Poly wasn't able to respond um, as well as we got. We had a home run last night as well from, from Iden. Right, but it just wasn't enough, and starting at the top of the eighth, the bullpen went through four pitchers and allowed three runs, and so that was really just the breaking point right there, and Cal Poly wasn't able to get their footing back at all. Yeah, especially late into the game there. It's hard to, to get that back, and as we were talking about, Trent Shelton had a great um, start of the last game throughout, throughout those seven innings, and that's that was a very good part um, of what we were seeing there. I mean, pitching seven innings, that's, a, that's what we want to see Cal Poly pitchers being able to get in there late into the game. Right, and we'll take a look at those three keys. What's going to be super imperative for the team tonight? Um, going, hopefully, maybe trying to get that win. Yeah, they want to split the series here and getting the win against UCLA, who has been doing so well. One of the things that we need to see is a strong bullpen. Right, key number one. We were just saying, you know, they went through four pitchers, allowing bullpen pitchers, allowing three runs in the top of the eighth. And, you know, it's, it's difficult when you have a really strong starting pitcher who really lays down the law and it, it, it collapses once you, once you pull them out. So it's going to be really imperative for the bullpen to keep that strong pitching alive. Yeah, Andrew Alvarez came in, and then he allowed three runs, and they're just looking for that answer to the UCLA offense. That has just been obviously doing very well. They've been rolling through conference and non-conference opponents. Right, finish strong. Let's take a look at that second key we got here, no errors. What do you what do you have to say about that, Brian? Yeah, no errors. You just gotta stay on top of the game here, and you gotta play your game as well for the Mustangs. I mean, they are playing against UCLA. It's a tough opponent, but they've got to stay focused and um, and and try to keep off the errors. Right. Each team, UCLA and Cal Poly, both had one error ending the night last night, and I believe Cal Poly's was a fielding error. So it's just gonna be a lot of communication. Um, just really focusing on what's happening out there on the field and then being able to react accordingly. Yeah, so our third key here for Cal Poly looking to pick up that win, situational awareness uh, as they take on UCLA. And that's just going to be really being alert of who they have on base, who's out in the outfield, just, again, really communicating between each of the players, making smart plays. I think that's going to be one of the most important things is just being able to react accordingly to what's happening and strong, smart fast plays to, to get those three outs before they have the chance to score any more runs. Yeah, we have a lot more on our show coming up to you. After the break, we'll have Connor McCarthy talking to Cal Poly broadcaster uh, Chris Sylvester. We'll be right back. In this day and age, everybody gets their news from social media. And my team's pretty much in charge of making sure that Mustang News has a great presence across all social media platforms. Whether that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Snapchat, we want to make sure that our news is reaching our audience. At Mustang News, we're truth tellers. We're student media, but we're going to do our best to tell the truth of our people and the voices of the Cal Poly campus. Thanks for coming in for the interview. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. All right, we got your personal references, your resume, high school diploma or equivalent. 
Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Yes, it's right there. Great. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Hey, um, this job looks perfect. Uh, it says you need people skills. Check. Uh, driver's license. Check. And a high school diploma. You've got one of those, right? Skip the drama. Get your diploma. I got that. You are good to go. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Hello, welcome to another fresh edition of Poly Playbook. We're serving up all the hot action, cool plays, and everything in between for Cal Poly Athletics. I'm Connor McCarthy. I'm Nate Edelman. I'm Brian Chong. Poly Playbook starts now. Who do you think will win the Super Bowl this year? I think the Patriots are going to win. Hi, I'm Joe Schatz, and I'm here at Spano Stadium. I'm Megan Healy here at Staples Center. Myself will be taking on Sierra Island. Best pitcher in Big West softball history. Let's see how this goes. Tune in every week to Poly Playbook right here on Mustang News. Mustang game day. A lot to unpack here as Cal Poly taking on the UCLA Bruins for the second game of the series. They want to split the series here as they were taken down last night, uh, 9 to 5. Uh, Cal Poly, so I mean, they're going to be looking to pick up that win. I think Connor McCarthy is standing by here with Chris Sylvester, um, the let's Mustang, let's, let's the Cal Poly Connor. broadcaster. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's see what they're up to. Hey, Megan and Brian. I'm out here. Actually, the best seats in the house in Baggett Stadium. And joining with me is Chris Sylvester. And actually, Chris got to meet Mike Krukos, hence the name Krukos Clubhouse. His name is pretty known around here at Baggett Stadium. But um, yeah, so Chris, tell me a little bit about Mike. Yeah, I, I was fortunate enough to be out at AT&T Park in the Bay Area a couple of days ago and, and meet uh, Mike Kruko along with the, the rest of the Giants uh, broadcast crew. And he had uh, nothing but great things to say about his time here at Cal Poly. He still has the uh, lowest earn run average of any pitcher to ever pitch here at Cal Poly, which is truly remarkable considering uh, how many great teams uh, on the baseball field that they've had here at Cal Poly. So it, it was it was a neat experience, and uh, he, he just moved away from San Luis Obispo. He used to uh, call it his home in the offseason uh, until a couple of years ago. He finally relocated to the Bay Area, but it, it was a great experience, and I hope for everybody's sake that, that sooner rather than later he'll come back for a game, maybe throw out a first pitch or something like that. So why is he such a legend here um, for the Cal Poly baseball team? Well, I think he sort of started a, a trend of successful professional athletes to come out of Cal Poly. Uh, b before Kruko, there, there really weren't those marquee names uh, at the major league level. Uh, forget baseball, but really any sport here at Cal Poly. And he sort of uh, turned that into a, a nice little tradition here. There are a couple of major league baseball players uh, in the league right now doing some big things. Mitch Hanniger of the Seattle, Mar uh, Seattle Mariners and uh, Bud Norris of the St. Louis Cardinals. So uh, a lot of big things happening with uh, Mustang baseball at the next level. And uh, I think you can attribute a lot of that success to Mike Kruko and uh, what he did uh, years ago at the major league level representing Cal Poly. Okay, so what do you do here for the Cal Poly baseball team? What do I do? Yep. Uh, I uh, do all the radio broadcasts. Uh, you can hear us on our flagship radio station, ESPN 1280, The Ticket. Uh, in San Luis Obispo County and then on the live video stream as well at BigWest.TV. Every single game, all 57. Wow. All right, um, and then also the clubhouse is being rebuilt. Um, can you kind of walk me through how uh, the clubhouse is, uh, the process of it coming along? Yeah, it's going to be a multi-million dollar facility. They actually added a, a side wall down here on the left field side, which is shorten the foul territory on the playing field but it should be ready at some point in 2019 and i think that'll just add to the great tradition here at cal poly all right well that's all the time we have i'll throw it back to you guys at the desk right here from uh best seats in the house thanks chris and connor those seats look pretty comfy and yeah. actually i got to meet mike kruko as well and talking about leaving a legend you know he's excited about the new clubhouse renovations that are in store for the next year um and actually i know that one of the players is a couple of the players are finishing up their time here at Cal Poly specifically shortstop Kyle Marincons and I got the opportunity to walk the bases with him and get a little bit get to know a little bit more about him so let's take a look at that sequel Mustang News and joining me in Baggett Stadium is shortstop Kyle Marincons. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Just ready for this interview. 
Awesome. So what we're going to do is walk the bases, walk and talk, basically. So you ready to do this? Uh, well, you know, walk and talk, walk and chew gum, same thing. So we'll see how it goes. All right, let's get started. So my first question for you is 2017, ending the season, you led the team with 32 RBIs. How do you continue that success this year? Uh, well, you know, it's a new year, so old stats don't really matter. Uh, so uh, every year is a clean slate. And I just try to do the best I can for the team. You know, uh, when you get up in those tight pressure situations, you got to come through and, um, you know, do the best you can. And uh, RBIs are what win games. So, you know, as many as you can get, the better for the team. Who is your best friend on the team? Uh, not Alex McKenna. Um, <laughs> he's my favorite player. Um, not Dylan Doherty. Uh, so, actually, you know what? Dylan Doherty. Dylan Doherty. He's smaller than me. So, you know, that's always a plus. Awesome. Um, let's see, what is your choices behind your walk-up songs? Because I know that you get three. So is there like a certain, you know, genre of music that you like to play? Because it really sets the tone of when you come up to bat. So what's what's the decision making behind that? Uh, so, you know, Friday night's your, your banger. You got to come out with a good song. Uh, I chose The Buzz by Hermitude. It's been my walk-up song since freshman year. Voted best walk-up song my freshman year. Um, kept that all the way through to junior year. Um, Saturday has changed for me. Um, I do. I used to do um, Genghis Khan, uh, but I don't do that this year. Uh, I forget what I chose this year. Uh, but Sunday's a new one for me. It's Money for Nothing, and it's the guitar intro. Uh, and a lot of people have come up to me and said it's a really good choice. You know, it's a pretty good song. So you have your your own choice, uh, your pop song, and then your rock song. So uh, I feel like I've done pretty good choices with those. So we're rounding second base here. My next question is, what is your favorite flavor of sunflower seed? Ooh, that's a tough one. Jumbo Ranch. Yeah. Jumbo Ranch is, uh, is a go-to. Most players love those. I didn't know that. All right, what is your first memory of baseball, if you can recall? Oh, man. Um, you know, it's probably getting yelled at uh, by my coaches and dad in T-ball for uh, just uh, running around the field, not doing what I was supposed to do. Um, but those were the days, those were the fun days. I also remember uh, competing for a championship in Little League and uh, going to Florida uh, and winning the Travel Ball National Championship. Those were some good memories of mine. So what are your thoughts on your little brother committing to the same school and the same team that you play for? Oh, you know, uh, I helped him along the way. You know, it was his choice, but uh, this is a great school and a great program, uh, and I thought he'd fit right in, and he loved it, and uh, too bad I don't get to play with him, you know, four years apart. But uh, I can't wait to see what this school has for him in the future. So we are in the last leg here, walking from third to home. So a couple more questions. How do you get your head in the game before you play? Uh, well, you know, it starts when you enter the gates. Um, you know, you get on the field, you stretch, you warm up. And uh, it, it comes into BP, and then you get into the locker room. You got about an hour or so. Uh, before the game starts, and so that's really when I start focusing and dialing in. Um, I mean, you're obviously dialed in during BP, uh, but that's a little bit looser, and then about 15 minutes for the game, before the game, uh, you got to flip the switch, and it's, it's all baseball. There's no, nothing else in your head, and that's, it, that's when you attack. Who is or was your baseball idol growing up? Alex McKenna, 100%. So He's the best player. He's the best player in the world. Um, probably going to be a number one draft pick. Um, so, yeah, I look up to him, and every day, you know, uh, I get to see him and watch him play in front of me, so it's always great. All right, we're standing on home plate right now. My last question for you, thank you, by the way, for doing this. I know that's very exhausting to walk the bases. Know, <laughs> My last question for you is any personal goals that you have going into this season? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, personal goals, I would say, uh, you know, just play the best I can. Uh, numbers take care of themselves when, when your team's winning. Um, the most important thing is we got to start winning. Uh, we got some pretty big series coming up, and uh, hopefully we can get on a roll here and uh, do some damage. All right, well, that was Kyle Maricon, shortstop for Cal Poly Baseball. I'm Megan Healy, Mustang News, Walk the Bases. It's always great to hear from the players themselves on the field, and we're going to find out who keeps Saget Stadium's field so clean. He's called the grass guy. Find out why right after this. It, sports is mostly good news, and... A lot of the time, a lot of the other news we get isn't necessarily good news. And so I think that it's kind of a nice break from a lot of the other not so great things that might be happening around the community and our campus. I think that 
Good journalism is objective and informative. It, it is as unbiased as possible. And I think that Mustang News does a really good job of that, reporting about the incidents on campus without necessarily putting a spin on them. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Welcome back to Mustang Game Day. We have a special guest with us, Steve Spadafor. He's the student field manager here at Baggett Stadium. Welcome on the show. Thanks for having me. Of course. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get this position? What made you decide to get into the grass business? Because we understand that your nickname is the grass guy. Yeah, the baseball team so lovingly coined me the grass guy. Um, I'm a fourth year turf grass and sports field management concentration student here. And you know, I mostly work in the golf course industry. That's where I'm going after graduation. But I was kind of brought in as a way to help with some field re renovations that were taking place this fall through an agronomist, uh, Paul Cushing, who I know from the industry. So it's been a really, really good experience. Yeah, so tell us a bit about, you know, the game prep, maybe prep for the season as well, just getting back at Stadium in order, getting it looking so good and prepared for the players. Absolutely. This fall we did a pretty major um, soil uh, re remediation process. We had some major soil issues that we had to deal with. Uh, thanks to Paul Cushing of Paul Cushing Agronomy. Um, he really helped correct those issues for us, which allowed us to drain faster, um, better nutrient availability. Basically, the way we were able to play this early in the season through all those rainstorms was a huge benefit because of because of the soil work we did. Um, I get a lot of the patterns for the outfields from other places. Tyler Lorenz is a big guy at TCU who I like to follow. He does great work and inspires me with designs. Um, you know, today I was out here about 10.30 in the morning, 10.30, Tonight it's a late night, have to water after the game, so I'll probably be here till about 12 or maybe even later. So. Long work days. So I understand Absolutely. that you guys have a pretty uh, eco-friendly, really high-tech water watering system. Yeah. Is that correct? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, one thing I've implemented since my time here is I use a pogo moisture meter. Um, it creates a map of the infield and the outfield as well as the skirt using GPS coordinates to help me determine how much I need to water when I need to water and you know it, it allows me to dial in the infield to be consistent day in and day out for the guys so they don't they know when a ball is coming at them it's going to skip the same way for them each time so yeah and you were talking about earlier the designs that you get to put uh, on the outfield is that just kind of a way for you to to kind of show some artistic side of it yeah absolutely it's <laughs> it's one thing I try to change every single week I you know I try to change the patterns you know Brandon Harden at Mississippi State is another person who I follow on Twitter who's given me some advice on patterns and I've I've stolen one or two pattern for, patterns from him before um, so yeah so what so what kind of goes into making a pattern out there on the grass um, it's basically every anytime you see a bright stripe if it looks like it's bright I was mowing away from the viewer and if it was a dark stripe I was mowing towards you so it's just basically it's playing with the direction that you decide to mow 
What kind of grass are you working with specifically out in the field? Uh, we have a ryegrass stand. Um, we have a little bit of poa annual in there as well. And Could you give us maybe some of the characteristics for people who like me <laughs> who don't know what yeah. type of grass that is? Um, <laughs> ryegrass is a great grass. We love it here on the Central Coast. Golf courses, home lawns, anything. It's you know, it's provides great color, great characteristics. It's what I like to see on a baseball field, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and when you're watching the game, are you kind of worried about the grass? Maybe it might get a little bit roughed up out there. Are you kind of paying attention to what you'll have to fix after the game? I, I'm definitely paying attention to some of the stuff that I, I know I'm going to have to touch on afterwards. But, you know, I, I joke with the players and my family, hey, that's job security. If they, if they mess up the grass, <laughs> I got to come back in there and fix it. So <laughs> Definitely. Have you done a specific design or any, you know, sort of something different to the field that you seen the players reaction and they were just like totally stoked on it um they were the the espn game they were really you know i put a lot of work in that getting a checkerboard pattern on both the infield and the skirt um so they they both they they really thought that was cool so <laughs> um what do you have anything special planned for to tomorrow or in the maybe in just the, the rest of the season yeah, yeah. anything exciting you want a hint that we should be you looking know, out for i would definitely say the next home stand we're gonna have something special we have we've had three straight home stands so it's been very difficult to change patterns week in and week out baseball teams on the road next weekend so i think when they come back they're gonna they'll be in store something nice so more time to put in some thinking and Absolutely. planning into this special design we'll Absolutely. be seeing <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely obviously the best way for people to to see it is to actually come out oh, the back and, and see it i mean the new renovated stadium and everything right yeah it's beautiful out here it's a it's a treat to be a part of this you know ron ion bob selders and the rest of the facility staff do an amazing job you know i'm just putting those little finishing touches but at the end of the day they're the they're the real brains behind what how awesome this place works so awesome. Thank you so much. This is the grass guy, Steven Spadafore, <laughs> the student field manager for Cal Poly Baseball. We are going to take a quick little break, but don't go anywhere. We're going to bring on Lauren Plume, and she's going to give us her predictions for the game. I'm the person responsible for um, deciding if things are going to be covered or not and assigning those stories to news reporters. Obviously, editor-in-chief is the last word on anything, but I am kind of that gatekeeper when it comes to pursuing a story or what angles to take with it. To me, journalism is um, telling the truth no matter what and getting everything as accurately as possible to tell a complete story when it deserves to be told. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. All right, and sitting next to us is Lauren Plume. She is a student team manager for the Cal Poly baseball team, and she's got her predictions for us. Let's specifically talk a little bit about Elijah Skips. Mm -hmm. You know, he is coming off an injury from last season, and he has really just stepped up to the plate, literally, and performed really well. So what do you have to say about him? Elijah Skips has been incredible in his, well, he's started nine games, or actually started eight games. Um, these last eight games that he's played in a row, he's had a hit in eight straight games, and most of those are multi-hit games. So really, he's kind of unstoppable at the plate. The only game he was held hitless that he's played in was his first game back against Dartmouth, and he really wasn't fully recovered at that point and ready to start playing again, and that's why he took a little break again, came back against Davis, went three for three in his first game back, 
and had a grand slam. Like, it doesn't get much better than that, really. <laughs> no, definitely not. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, we're looking for something here from the Cal Poly offense for someone to step up. So you think it's going to be him? Any other guys there you think are going to be stepping up? Elijah Skips is definitely the guy, like, right now that when somebody comes up to the plate, I'm like, he's going to get a hit. Like, he's he's formidable at the plate, for sure. Um, somebody else that you can definitely look out for is Kyle Marincons, as of recently, has gotten really hot uh, in the two spot. Um, and he's just, he's a guy that you would rely on, you want to rely on when he comes to the plate. You know he's going to get a hit, um, just much like Elijah Skips. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, definitely. And, you know, you can see this graphic of him right here, and his batting average is almost about a three. Um, and I would even say Tate Samuelson, the freshman, has been doing yep. really well. I mean, he, he in depending on where he is in the lineup, I'd say he he performs really strongly as well. Yeah, he hit a little lull um, around Northridge. It was kind of like there's a few games where it just kind of he dropped off and batting average a little bit, um, but that didn't stop him. He got right back. He's back to the way he was. And as a freshman, that is still impressive to see. Right, high potential. Yeah, yeah and going back to Skips, I mean, as a senior here, Seeing him coming off of an injury, I'm sure that's a great leadership thing here for, for the Mustangs. No, to have him come back and uh, not only with his work, because he's such a leader, even when he's not playing, but to come back and show that he's a leader as well, it, this is what, he's firing up the team. Like, he, he is the driving force between what Cal, behind what Cal Poly is doing. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so what's his leadership style? Is he lead by example on the plate? Is he hyping the guys up, you know, with pregame speeches or something? Uh, he's definitely a bit of both. Um, when he wasn't playing, he's all about, like, talking to the guys, always positive, always giving energy to the game. He even, like, would come travel out to games. He wasn't on the list for He was injured. He couldn't play. He'd come. He came to Arizona. Like, uh, just on his own, just to, you know, support the team. And then now that he can play, he showed up, and he's he's just our our firecracker <laughs> in the fourth spot right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's swing on over to a little bit of the pitching side of it. Last night, we saw, you know, Trent Shelton pitch into the seventh inning. Great starting pitching right there, really held at the mound. But once he was yanked from the game, the bullpen kind of fell apart and lost, honestly, lost the game. Um, Let's talk a little bit about us, one specific pitcher, Matt Ahrens. Mm -hmm. What do you have? What does he have in store for us tonight? So Matt Ahrens has been a bit of a wild card this year, and as the whole bullpen has been a bit of a wild card this year, they're either really hot or we have issues. Um, if Matt Ahrens is hot, he will shut the game down. Like we saw at Long, or when we played Long Beach, comes in as a freshman, ninth inning, and or. Sorry, yeah, top of the ninth <laughs> inning. <laughs> Getting my uh, bearings here. <laughs> top of the ninth inning, we're down by one run, or we're up by one run. We have to hold on to the win. The bases are loaded. He strikes out two guys. As a freshman, that's incredible. But then you can also have a day where he comes out and he just doesn't have control. Um, and that's kind of what we saw from him over the summer a little bit, is he was, uh, like, had this huge velo. He's, like, pitching 96 mile an hour fastball, wow. which as a freshman is crazy. But then had to rein that in and, like, lowers velo. It's, like, 85 now, but has control. So that's super important. So it's kind of like, it's, it's a hit or miss, but I think if he's on, we're, we're, we're set. <laughs> yeah, we're seeing him coming into these higher pressure situations. And what else is higher pressure than facing the number nine team in the nation here with UCLA? We're looking, Cal Poly, they're looking for the answer to the offense of, of the Bruins. And is the answer in Darren Nelson here, who is starting for the Mustangs at the mound? Two parts there. I know you're talking about your three keys, the errors and our bullpen. So I'm going to go more to the error side of it. Darren Nelson is not a strikeout pitcher, which is there's nothing wrong with that, but he relies heavily on his defense. We had a really good defensive game last night, but that was behind Trent Shelton, who is a strikeout pitcher. He has a killer slider, and, you know, he gets guys looking, he gets guys swinging. He, yeah, he just knows how to get it done. Yeah, strikeouts last night. Yeah. yeah. Darren Nelson isn't the same type of pitcher, but if our defense is strong behind him, we can definitely be in this game. So the no errors, it sounds like an obvious thing, but with Darren Nelson pitching, it is super important because our defense and Darren Nelson complement each other. And if they're clicking, then we can win this game. Right. What about the wind? We actually, you know, from our hair right now, it's, <laughs> it's flown pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think the team's going to be able to adjust to the, the high wind power? Um, I think we're used to playing it in San, like in the wind in San Luis Obispo. Um, I think most of the time in like the late afternoon when we practice like two to four o'clock, it's the windiest time of day. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, we're set and we're ready for it. Um, I don't think there's going to be too many adjustments made, probably just like a um, like approach the plate really is really what we're looking at here difference wise yeah i mean what are some other key players we should be looking out here for the mustangs uh, other key players to look out for uh, i think colby barrick is definitely somebody that we should be looking out for especially at the plate um he it, it was a battle for that left field starting position and colby just came out slightly on top just in the batting percentage um 
and every time he comes up to the plate with he's very clutch with the bases loaded or with people on base and I think that's super important if he keeps like doing what he does when people are on and bringing guys home I think that'll uh, really help us out today awesome well really quickly before we go to this last graphic here just tell us what do you think the final score is going to be uh let's say Five Cal Poly. <laughs> well, there you have it. Clues oh. predictions. <laughs> All right. After the break, we're going to be speaking with Cal Poly Athletic Director Don Oberhelm and Don't Go Anywhere. In this day and age, everybody gets their news from social media and my team's pretty much in charge of making sure that Mustang News has a great presence across all social media platforms. Whether that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Snapchat, we want to make sure that our news is reaching our audience. At Mustang News, we're truth tellers. We're student media, but we're going to do our best to tell the truth of our people and the voices of the Cal Poly campus. Thank you. Our mission for this year is to basically get the news first so that Cal Poly students are aware. Like there have, so far to start off the beginning of the year, there have been things such as like parking and bus routes and students have so many questions about that. And so that kind of goes to what I want to do for this year as I want to get that information out to students. Good journalism means that we are getting the story out, but that it includes all the information, that it answers all the questions that people are asking. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few are in a shelter near you. Harlow, oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Shrulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend, a dog. chairs. <laughs> um, not the desk. Not the, the desk, chairs. not the desk, the chairs. <laughs> um, but we're actually going to take a little step back away from baseball and just talk about the campus community as a whole. Um, you know, we know that you released a statement, the Mustang United statement, not too long ago on, you know, social media platforms. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you wanted that purpose of the statement to, to reflect, you know, with this kind of tense climate on yeah. campus? athletes about it uh, after the, the blackface incident with the fraternity and you know, there are a few other things I think that happened that helped kind of ignite some um, you know some, there's some hurt feelings and I think some uh, rightfully people to be upset about some things so uh, about a week after that we got our student athletes together and we had a, a really frank and candid conversation that um, really was educational for me and I think educational for the our staff members that were there just with the, the type of experiences our student athletes have. So uh, we know, particularly from an Af African-American standpoint, our campus is not representative of the California population. Uh, our athletic department is a big part of that African-American community that we have on our campus. So I thought it was important that we had a conversation. And uh, I heard some things that really troubled me and some things that really made me very proud uh, of our university. What troubled me is sometimes uh, we have some individuals that don't feel so safe and welcome uh, on campus and in our community. Uh, at the same time, I heard from those, those same individuals how happy uh, and welcome and um, excited they are to be in Mod Athletic Center with their teams, that that is a place that they feel safe and they can be themselves. So my message to the campus is let's learn from our student athletes. Not from me, not from the administration, but from our student athletes. Uh, they can teach us some valuable lessons because they have created their own little society and mod uh, where it is an, a truly inclusive and welcoming environment. You touched a little bit upon this, but specifically you said in conversation, quote, in conversation with our student athletes, 
I've learned that many of our students of color only feel comfortable within the confines of our buildings and with their teams. So, I mean, again, can you just maybe a little elaborate a little bit on what the student response, the student athlete response for that was? Yeah, so um, that, that was the positive, I think, portion of that meeting and that they just, um, it's the one time of their day that for some of them, I won't say all and for everybody, but uh, the stories that I heard is the one part of their day that they feel like that they can be, uh, they can relax, that they don't have to put on some, some airs or some sort of false front about their identity or who they are because uh, we value them as an individual, their coaches do, and certainly their teammates do. And I think that's what's the most important part of this is, is it's not about us as administrators. Right. It's about the students uh, and, and, and the comfort level that they have with each other and the embrace that they have for each other um, that I would like to see some leadership from our student athletes for the rest of the campus and how we've been able to accomplish that for us it doesn't matter your origin your economic background your ethnic background your religion none of those things matter to us can you play and can you be a good teammate and if you can do those two things you're one of us we love you so why why is why can't the rest of society follow this and and of course we look at the rest of the campus the same way so if, if you can study if you can go to school you can be a mustang what difference does anything else make embodied that within the athletic community. Yeah, and as you were saying, you know, we've been talking as sports reporters here from Mustang News, we've been talking to many athletes, and a lot of them credit Cal Poly as it's a very, the, the athletic system here, it's very family oriented. The, the coaches feel like family, the teams feel like family. Um, what are they, just your thoughts on that? Well, one of the cool things about Cal Poly is all our, all our sports and, and coaches and everybody, we all congregate in one building. And other athletic departments I've worked with, it's not that way yet. Football way over here in the North 40, you got basketball in their own building, you got tennis and golf in their own places. And in Cal Poly, all our student athletes work out in the same building, they lift weights in the, in the same building, they get their treatment in the same building in terms of medical treatment, uh, study hall tutors, academic advising is all in the same building. So they all know each other. So if you're on the tennis team, you know everybody that's on the football team. If you're on the basketball team, you know everybody on the volleyball team. And I think that's really helped us uh, with that type of environment because some teams are more and less diverse than others. So not all teams do have that great diverse uh, atmosphere, but the department does. So I'll use women's golf as an example. Yes, they there may not be an African-American student athlete on that team, but they work out with, with, with those other student athletes every single day. They may have tutoring appointments and other things every single day with those other student athletes. So I think it, it has created a bit of camaraderie with them of we are part of the Mustang family and we are Mustangs United. Let's talk a little bit about how the College of Republicans welcomed Milo Yiannopoulos in Mott Athletic Center. Tell us, I mean, how, how are you feeling about that? What was, you know, the response around that? So I'll answer that with kind of giving you a backstory real quick. So one of the worst things we can do is have an open forum and talk about some of these issues and we don't talk about them again. So we're going to talk about these again next week with the same group of students. And that's going to be a topic of discussion is the fact that we had, you know, to use this, the terms that many of our students have used, you know, somebody that's going to come and preach hate on our campus. In the one building that we have that is our home that all of our students feel comfortable in, uh, I, I think that's going to be hurtful. I, I don't think they're going to be very happy about that. Um, and that's something I think we're going to have to address. Uh, at the appropriate time, but I, I obviously wasn't thrilled about it, but uh, we're good partners with the rest of the campus. University police assured us that is the place where we can be the most safe because we're, we're here to protect all the students, the students that are there and the students that are going to protest, and that was the safest atmosphere, so of course we said yes. Yeah, and our final question here for you today, um, as you were saying, Cal Poly Athletics, it's a great family-oriented uh, place, and it's a space where people can talk about these issues. So how do you get that into the rest of the Cal Poly community? How do you have these student athletes be leaders for the rest of the community I here? Think that's a great question. I, I, th I think one of the things that we need to work on is getting more of our student athletes involved with the rest of campus, and that's already been a topic uh, of conversation. They're really busy. You know, I mean, you're, you know how busy you guys are. Oh, yeah. Add 20 hours a week of practice plus five hours of weightlifting plus blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it's a hard, it's a, it's a tough road already. And now to ask them to do even more, I think is a real challenge for us, but uh, there's a lot of student activities and student groups that are involved with helping trying to lead this on campus. So I'm gonna encourage them to get involved with those other organizations. Um, and then I think that's a great question to ask them, and that's one of the things I'm gonna challenge 
our student athletes uh, later on this week on Wednesday with that same question, okay, we have these problems, it's time for us to lead, it's time for you guys to lead. You know, this is one of those issues that the gener each generation should teach the generation ahead of them how to do this better. So this is an area my generation did far better than my parents. And this is an area that your generation is doing far better than mine. So I think, I think it's time for our, our campus and really everybody to start learning from you guys about how to do this and how to do this better. Well, we thank you so much for coming on the show and giving Very a little bit of your, of your insight on this topic. After the break, we are going to talk a little bit about our final thoughts on the game as Darren Nelson will take the mound in about 20 minutes. Don't go anywhere. The thing about broadcast is it's not just on paper, so now you're actually seeing people's emotions and their reactions, and I think you just really learn a lot by being able to go face to face and also have a camera and capture those emotions. And broadcast is so fun in my opinion because you, what you, you can take what you see and show it to your audience and show them exactly what you're witnessing or other people are witnessing at the moment. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors and to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs, to always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Give me back! They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Just a little under 20 minutes left here at Baggett Stadium as Cal Poly taking on UCLA for the second game of the three-game series, looking to split the second game. Megan, we've been talking all day about the players. We've ta had Lauren on the on the chairs here. <laughs> I mean, what are the final things we're going to be looking at? Again, I think it's just really going to be coming down to playing smart, like those three keys that we mentioned earlier, the no errors, the strong defense, and really just a strong bullpen as well. I, I truly believe that it, it obviously it is a team effort for anything, yeah. but if you have a strong pitcher that's coming in and doing a great job, you it's really imperative for the team to keep that momentum going into you know, the ending inning. So yeah. of I, I'm... Of course, I mean, <laughs> midway through the game, Cal Poly was able to take the lead and it was very hopeful here for the, the Mustang fans at Baggett Stadium and watching at home. And, you know, it's this high pressure situation because UCLA, the ending right after Cal Poly took the lead, UCLA um, picked it back up and they retook the lead to make it six to five off of a wild pitch as well. So it's seeing, you know, Matt Aaron's coming in possibly here in that high pressure spot. Can he handle it as well as for Darren Nelson? Right. And I think that it kind of gave Cal Poly a little bit of a confidence booster last night when they were able to take the lead at least once during the game against the number nine nationally ranked team. Yeah, it's a, it's a saying like, hey, you know, we can play with these guys. We can take a lead here. Let's see if we can do it. Right. So Darren Nelson is, you know, gearing up here to take the mound against another freshman pitcher, uh, Petaway. And it's going to be an interesting game. Fans are now pouring into the stadium, which means that we have to unfortunately wrap up our show here. It's Unfortunately, Megan, it's your last game day. You will be missed, though. Thank you. A last game day anchoring. So yeah. thank you so much to everyone who's watching and to our whole crew. Mustang Game Day, Megan Healy and Brian Trong signing off. <laughs>